What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with our partial quotients lesson. Today, we're taking it to the next step, and we're going to be doing three and four digit dividends by two digit divisors. So let's split it open and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today you will be able to divide three and four digit dividends by two digit divisors by using the partial quotient division strategy. So hopefully this isn't your first partial quotient lesson with us. If it is, don't worry about it. It's awesome. Check out these steps. If you need help, you can go back and check out some of the previous videos about how to do one digit divisors or check out our awesome partial quotient song. But here are your steps. The notes that you can take are in the description for this video. You can either print them out or just fill them out online. Whatever is going to help you become your best math self. So step number one for part doing partial quotient division. The dividend goes on the inside, the divisor goes on the outside. Step number two, you're gonna make an easy multiple sheet if you need to. If you're not real comfortable with your basic facts, you probably won't be comfortable with your basic facts today because we're doing two digit divisors. Go ahead and make the easy multiple sheet. It's gonna help you build your answer. Step number three, you're gonna follow the steps HMSR, which we'll talk about in a second. And step number four, you are done when you subtract and have a number left that is less than the divisor. So you'll see these in action. Let's take a look at what HMSR means. If you haven't heard our awesome song, don't worry about it. You should check that out. But H is for how many groups, right? That's the first question you're going to ask yourself. M, then you're going to multiply. S, subtract. And then R, you're going to repeat until you, when you subtract, the number you have left is less than your divisor, and then that number becomes your remainder, right? So you got the R for either repeat or it's your remainder. I just thought about that. I should have said that the other two lessons. Without further to do, let's get into the I do, okay? So the 789 is gonna be your dividend, obviously, so that goes on the inside. Your divisor is going to be 33, and then we are going to draw the line down the side. And then I like to say a little rhyme, skip a line, draw a line, and draw your times, all right? So my divisor is 33. So really what you're doing in division, well, one of the ways you can divide is you can think about this as, all right, if I have 789, how many groups of 33 can I fit into that? Well, that's one of the two ways to think about division, but that's how it's going to be a little bit easier for you to think about as you do this. So what you want to do then is you want to list your easy multiple sheet. What are your easy groups of 33 that you can use? Okay, so 1 times 33 would obviously be 33. I know 2 times 33 just means I would double 33, which would be, oops, sorry, 33. That'd be 66. And then um, just because 33 is a little bit easier to do in my head, I know that 3 groups of 33 would be 99. Now, if you know more than that, that's great. I'm just going to stop there, and I'm going to use my basic facts of 1, 2, and 3 to help me. So now if I made this a 10, I know 10 groups of 33 would be 330, right? I'm using my powers of 10 to help me fill these out. I know 20 groups of 33 would be 66, and I know 30 groups of 33 would be, oops, sorry, 660, and 30 groups of uh, 33 would be 990. Now, 990 is too big, right? 990 is bigger than 789, so I'm going to start with the 660. So, my steps are how many groups, multiply, subtract, and repeat. How many groups of 33 am I going to use? I'm going to use 20 groups of 33. Again, because of our rule of thumb, you want to use the biggest chunk possible because it will make the least amount of steps for you to do. When you multiply 20 times 33, you've already done that math, that's 660. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to get 129 left, which means I can't do 66. I can't do 330. I can do 99, right? So I'm going to skip a line, draw a line, put my times. I got to repeat because 129 is not less than 33. This would be three groups of 33. When you multiply that, that's going to be 99. I get zero. On the floor, go next door, get 10 more. I have 30 left. Now, 30 is less than 33, okay? So this is going to be my remainder. So now I just add up the groups on the side, and I have 23 groups, so the two goes in the 10 spot, the uh, tens place, the three goes in the ones place, and I have a remainder of 30. So my answer for this is 23 with a remainder of 30. Now, a lot of people get really confused by this because they're like, Mr. Instructor Beats, dude, behind the mic, you're really cool, but my remainder can't be bigger than my quotient. Well, that's 
just blatantly not true, okay? And to think about this, we have to think about a word problem. So to help us kind of visualize why this works, let's do 789, right, divided by 33, okay? And that would be 23, and you'd have a remainder of 30. So let's make this a word problem. Let's make this cookies, okay? So we're gonna split up cookies, and we're gonna be putting 33 cookies into each bag, okay? So bag can only hold 33 cookies. That would give us 23 bags, and then your remainder is whatever you're splitting up, right? Once you got done splitting up the cookies, you were left over with 30 cookies. We have an awesome song about this called Parts of Division Song. We also have some lessons about it. Please check these out if you're confused. So I have 23 bags, right, that each have 33 in it, and then I had a leftover of 30 cookies, right? Well, I can't put those in a bag because each bag needed 33. So my quotient is 23, and my remainder is the leftover cookies, right? These have really nothing to do with each other. 23 would be bags, 30 would be cookies, right? And the, you needed 33 in a bag, so you couldn't make another one. So it's okay if your remainder is bigger than your quotient. It's not okay if your remainder is bigger than your divisor, okay? If this is bigger than 33, that means I could take another group of 33 out. So that's a misconception I just want to quickly address. Let's take a look at a we-do problem. So here's our we-do problem, right? Uh, go ahead and put this in your notes with us. We know that your dividend is 5,654 and you are dividing by 67, which means my easy multiple sheet will be for my divisor of 67. So one times 67 is 67, all right? Um, which I don't know this one yet, but I can figure this out, right? 67 plus 67, repeated addition. Oops, sorry, I gotta re regroup my one. Should be 134. So if I have two groups of 67, that would be 134. And I'm gonna stick with this okay um, and so I know 10 groups of 67 would be 670 I know that 20 groups of 67 would be 100 uh, sorry 1340 okay um, I'm not there yet so let's do 100 groups of 67 so 100 groups of 67 and that would equal 6700 so that's too big right I can't use that but you know what? I don't really this I don't feel like this is a big enough chunk. All right. So let's actually do 30 times 67. So if I wanted to add another group of 67 here, that'd be 11, right? 9, 10. That would be 201. So 3 times 67 is 201, which means 30 times 67 would be 2010. So I'm going to go ahead and use that just because I'm using my easy multiple sheet. All right. You could use something else if you wanted to, right? There's different ways to build your answer. So I'm going to go ahead and use 30 groups here. And when I multiplied 30 groups, that was 2010. So now, I'm, oh, sorry, I forgot to put my steps right here. I'm going to subtract. There we go. And I get 3,644, which obviously is not less than 67. I'm going to use another group of 30. So that's going to be 2,110. And there we go. And I'm going to get 1,100 or sorry, 1,634 left. Okay, so now I can't use that anymore, but I can use 20 groups. So if I use 20 groups, when I multiply, that's 1,340. Again, I'm getting that from my easy multiple sheet right here. So I'm going to go ahead and more on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. And I have 294 left. All right, draw a line, skip a line, put your times. I can't use 1,340 anymore. Six, uh, 670 is too big. So I'm going to go ahead and use 134, which when I put is two groups, and that's going to be 134 right there. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to get 160 left, and guess what? I can actually do another group. There you go. Skip a line, draw a line, put my times. Another group of two, and let me extend my page. More on the floor. Go next door, get 10 more. That's going to be 10, and I have 26 left over. 26 is less then my divisor so this is going to be my remainder i'm done which means i just need to add up all the numbers on the side so i have 30 plus 30 which is 60 plus 20 which is 80 plus 4 which is 84 so i'm gonna put the 8 in the tens place the 4 in the ones place and my remainder is going to be 26. so my answer is 84 or my sorry my quotient is 84 and i had a remainder of 26 left over so what we want you to take with you when you use the partial quotient strategy there are many ways to find an answer. A lot of you guys might have used different basic facts, different partial quotients, and come up with the same answer I just came up with. 
And that's totally fine, right? The great thing about partial quotients is that anybody can use it because anybody can build their answer in their own way. Thank you so much for checks out today. We really appreciate it. We know you have lots of different options online. Uh, we love that you've chosen Struct and Beats to watch this video. Check out our partial quotient song, the rest of our division playlist. And as always, please subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, let us know where you're watching from. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.